to calculate <coughs> moles, concentration, and uh, titration data. Uh, the first question is practicing how to calculate the number of moles of substance if you're given the concentration and the volume. And we use our familiar formula, n is equal to mv, where n, uh, n equals the number of moles, m is equal to the molarity, expressed in units of moles per liter, moles of solute per liter of solution, and the V is the volume in liters. All right, so uh, how do you prepare two liters of 0.444 molar strontium acetate? Now, I wrote strontium acetate here, but if I hadn't written strontium acetate, it would be a good idea for you to know that strontium is a uh, group 2 metal, so it has a plus 2 charge when it forms an ion. And the acetate anion has a minus 1 charge, so you'll need two acetate ions to combine with strontium. So the formula for strontium acetate is a SR bracketed CH3COO, and it's not acetic acid, it's acetate. So the acetic acid missing its proton is the acetate anion, and there's two of them. Uh, so two liters of that solution at a concentration of 0.444 is going to give us 0.888 moles of strontium acetate. We then multiply by the molar mass of strontium acetate, which is composed of one strontium atom, four carbons. There's two carbons in this formula, but because the formula is multiplied by two, we have four carbon atoms, six times hydrogen for the same reason, and four times oxygen for the same reason. Uh, gives you 182.6698. 0.5 grams of strontium acetate. Now you would want to dissolve this amount and then dilute the solution to uh, two liters in a volumetric flask or a suitable vessel. Uh, one question that came up is, sir, how do we measure this accuracy of, of uh, strontium acetate? You can't for the most part. You, you won't be able to measure it to that level of accuracy. But you'll see that the question poses, uh, that it is posed with three significant figures of accuracy. So in actual fact, you would only have to worry about getting 183 grams if it was posed to you with that level of accuracy. So you could say as a final answer, dissolve 183 grams of strontium acetate in water and dilute to two liters. And what actually happens in real life is that you, you, uh, you dissolve a certain amount of your salt in the neighborhood of this number, and then you, you take account of how much you actually put in and then it gives you a concentration that is very close to uh, 0.444. It wouldn't be, it would not be exactly 0.444 uh, because it wouldn't be exactly this number. <coughs> Except, of course, if you had measured it to say um, five, five significant figures. There are balances that will easily measure two, four, or five decimal places. And if you really took the trouble, I suppose you could measure out with that kind of accuracy, but it would be very painstaking, and I failed to see what the point would be unless you were doing some kind of extremely um, sensitive analytical assay. Second question is, how would you prepare 3.5 liters of 0.55 molar ammonium thiocyanate? Again, you have to know what this formula of thiocyanate is. It's SCN minus, it's got a negative one charge. Ammonia has a plus one charge, so you put one of each of these polyatomic ions to form ammonium thiocyanate. We use the same formula. The number of moles is equal to the molarity of the solution times the volume of the solution. And you notice how the liters cancel, and it gives you an answer in moles. 1.925 moles of ammonium thiocyanate is needed. If you know how many moles, and you multiply by the molar mass calculated here in this bracket, you get that you need 146.535158. Again, the question is formulated with only two significant figures of accuracy, so you could get away with answering 1.5 times 10 to the 2 grams of ammonium thiocyanate dissolved in water and diluted uh, to 3.5 liters. Uh, this is two significant figures. You could also write it as 150 grams. That's also two significant figures. This zero is a space where it doesn't count as a significant figure. The only way it would count as a significant figure is if you put a decimal place there. So just be aware of that. Uh, third question is how many grams of solute are necessary to, re to make 2.5 liters of 1.77 molar zinc acetate. The formula of zinc acetate is uh, zinc 
with three uh, with two acetate molecules. Zinc is a plus two charge. Acetate is a minus one charge. We use our same formula: 1.77 times 2.5 liters, 4.4 moles of zinc acetate times its molar mass gives you how many grams of zinc acetate. And then we're only allowed three significant figures, so I would report 812 grams of zinc acetate is needed. Fourth question: How many mLs of 0.33 molar solution contain 0.05 moles of rubidium chloride? We use the same formula, but now we're solving for the volume. So I transposed the m to that side becomes a division. N over m is equal to the volume. Here's the number of moles. Here's the number. Here's the concentration uh, that gives us a value of 0.15 liters. We convert it to milliliters by multiplying by a thousand. The answer is 150.15 recurring. That's what that bar means over the number. It means these three numbers keep on recurring in our calculation. Of course, we're only allowed two significant figures. See, this zero is a, spa uh, is a spacer. This zero is significant because somebody took the trouble to write it after the five. It means that it was measured to that level of accuracy. So this is a two significant figure value. Uh, so our answer can have two significant figures and it becomes 150 as the final answer. If writing it this way bothers you, you could just simply say 1.5 times 10 to the two ml of solution. Then you can see more clearly that it's two significant figures. So 150 ml of solution will contain 0.05 moles of rubidium chloride. The fifth question <clears throat> says, how many ml of a 0.95 molar solution contain 5.21 grams of ferric cyanate? Uh, ferric means it's a plus three charge. Cyanate is a minus one charge. Be aware of the fact that cyanate has the carbon in the middle. Uh, very often you see people do that. That's actually fulminate. I mean, you'll give that myself. This is actually fulminate. If you look at the Lewis structure, nitrogen in the middle is fulminate, carbon in the middle is cyanate. Uh, cyanate has a minus three, a minus one charge, so it takes three of them to combine with ferric. So we're told we have 5.21 grams of ferric cyanate. We're going to divide by the molar mass of cyanate. Um, this is iron, this is the three carbons, three nitrogens, and the three oxygens. Y3, because there's a 3 outside the bracket, and NCO, NCO the cyanate, has one of each, uh, gives you 2.86 times 10 to the minus 2 moles of the ferric cyanate. We then use our formula, rearranged for the volume that we need. Here's the number of moles, here's the molarity. Plug in the two numbers, and we get that we need 3.01 times 10 to the minus 2 liters. We multiply by 1,000 to convert to milliliters, 30.15 milliliters. We're only allowed two significant figures. Um, so 30 mLs of solution is needed. The last question is a bit more challenging because it involves a unit of conversion, uh, and it's a dilution question. It, it asks, 55.7 mLs of a 3.5 molar uh, sodium chloride solution is added to an Olympic-sized swimming pool with dimensions 50 by 25 by 2 meters. It's two meters deep, 25 wide, 50 long. <coughs> what is the new concentration of sodium chloride? Assume the pool contains only pure water. Assume the density of water is 1.0 grams per milliliter, uh, which would be true if the water temperature was around 4 degrees Celsius. That's where water achieves its highest density. And that explains why most lake bottoms are 4 degree water, because the, the densest water stays at the bottom of the lake. So it doesn't matter if the lake is deep enough, winter, summer, temperature will be 4 degrees Celsius because of that fact, the fact that water is density, or the highest density occurs at this temperature. Uh, so what conversion factor we're going to use? We have one liter is equal to one decimeter cubed. A decimeter cubed is about the width of a palm. That's 10 centimeters. So one decimeter cubed would be that high, that wide, and that long. And there are 1,000 decimeters cubed in one meter cubed because it's 10 by 10 by 10. And that's what we're showing here. One meter cubed is equal to 10 decimeters per meter. If we're, if we're talking about linear uh, meters, there are 10 decimeters in one meter. But because there's a convert, it's a volume conversion factor, we're going to raise that conversion factor to the power of three. And that's how we find out that there are 1,000 decimeters cubed in one meter cubed. And one decimeter cubed is exactly equal to one liter in volume. Our swimming pool has a volume of 50 by 50. 25.2 is 50, so 50 by 50 gives you 2,500 meters cubed. So I started the calculation here. Here's the volume of our swimming pool in meters cubed. We're going to multiply meters cubed by 1,000 liters per meter cubed, which gives us 2.5 million liters. 
That's the volume of the pool. We're going to then use the dilution formula. The amount of salt is going to be the same. It's invariant. It's just like in a titration. The same idea occurs in a titration. In a titration, you have the same amount of base as you do, as you do uh, the amount of acid. In a dilution, you have the same amount of substance presence. The only difference is you have more solvent, so you spread it out over a larger volume. So here's the initial molarity of the sodium chloride solution. Here's the volume of the sodium chloride solution, 55.7 thousandths of a liter. We're going to work in liters because I started calculating the volume of the pool liters anyway. The total volume of the pool after you add the 55.7 ml is 2.5 million .0557 liters. This is the extra volume added by throwing in the solution. So you see it's a very small amount. It's hardly going to put a dent in the total volume of the pool. But numbers are numbers, so when we calculate, we're going to get the exact value, and then we can deal with the significant figures after. We're solving for M2, so I'm going to transpose the V over here. So M1, V1 over V2 is equal to M2, M2 symbolizing the concentration of the salt in the swimming pool. We get 6.79539985 times 10 to the minus 8. Uh, the original problem only had three significant figures in it, so our final answer could only have three significant figures. That rounds this down to 6.8 times 10 to the minus 8 molar sodium chloride concentration. By the way, whenever you write something in square brackets like that, what you're saying is you're reporting its concentration. So that would be sodium chloride concentration. That's how you read that symbol. Any questions? <coughs>